Many people nowadays talk about the monetization of gaming since there has been so many in the past. Paid map packs, simple camo sales, season passes, battle passes with a shop, and loot boxes. The current monetization system to most people is the worst it ever has been with $20 to $30 skins, $10 palette swaps, $30 battle passes, and having to keep buying stuff every couple of months. It can go on forever. While I do agree that the current system gaming has is disgusting, aside from battle passes, I don't really mind those. People seem to have forgotten how horrendous loot boxes actually were. We will look back at what is the worst monetization system of all time, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. This is probably coined as the best of the jetpack era of COD games. It has excellent map design, the first game that added the dark matter camo, the hero gear for characters for finishing all their challenges, and the best zombies experience to date with a plethora of maps and custom zombies on top of it. The whole package is incredible, aside from the campaign because it sucks balls, just like the good old black market. Here you can get some supply drops and right away this is a red flag from the get go. We just came off of advanced warfare at the time and that had the whole weapon variant system where you could get objectively better guns out of supply drops but thankfully advanced warfare added master prestige levels to let players get all the overpowered guns just from playing the game. It's still fucked but at least it was something. You can acquire crypto keys by playing Black Ops 3, 10 will allow you to get a common supply drop and a whopping 30 will get you a rare supply drop or you can spend cash money and 200 CP will allow you to get one one rare supply drop. Again, this was a very worrying sign, especially when we figured out that weapons were coming. At first, it was a few melee weapons, which is not a big deal. Who's actually going to care about a reskinned knife? The butterfly knife and crowbar were the first two added, and people were kind of on edge but content with it since there was no actual range guns in the store until we got the news. Our worries became reality in early of March 2016. The HG40, MX Garand, and RSA interdiction were added to supply drops. This came with reasonable outrage, of course. The content creator said, hey, easy money, and talked about how great supply drops are, and made a shitload of clickbait videos tricking people into getting free supply drop, how to use the weapons for free, and all that bullshit. Needless to say, people wanted Triarch and Activision to kick rocks for hoodwinking the community like this. Getting lied to is not a great feeling, but it did not stop. Update after update, new weapons here, new weapons there, preying on nostalgia, M16 from Black Ops 1, MSMC from Black Ops 2. It was just disgusting. People were on record saying they spent hundreds of dollars to get a single weapon in the game. Of course, you can call them an absolute fucktard for doing something like that. The hardcore player base just really wanted those weapons. Grinding out crypto keys was more than a chore, taking two to three hours for a 30 just to open one supply drop with under a 1% chance to get a weapon is not fun. You could open common supply drops, but most people would stick to the rares to have higher chances. And do you know the best part about these weapons as well? All of the top tier weapons from Black Ops 3 are in supply drops. From research, I found the MSMC, Nailgun, Olympia, and Marshall 16 are all the most irritating weapons to go against, and if another player has them, you're just fucked most of the time. Going against an Olympia and Marshall 16 is cheese whiz, especially due to the fact this game has an exploit where you can be invisible and invincible. People are obviously going to abuse these toxic setups, but you can't even mirror it since you don't have the weapons because you weren't lucky enough, ruining the competitive integrity of every single match. There are so many weapons in this game people have never even used. I used to play Black Ops 3 so much on Xbox and I barely have any of them. I believe I stopped there on Master Prestige level 350 with all that playtime. Hardly anything, maybe seven or eight weapons at maximum. But we were so lucky Activision decided to smile grace on us, allowing us to have this fantastic challenge where we needed 75 wins. And let's say that one more time, 75 wins. People complaining about playing 15 matches, doing something dumb, 75 wins. You don't win every single game, do you? No, you don't. What if you're bad at the game? What if your win rate's like 40 or 50% or something? The time you need to spend playing for one gun is unreal. Every match is around seven minutes or so in team deathmatch, which is what most people play. If you were to win every single match, it would still take you about nine hours to do this. What if you had to play 150 matches going for the 50% win rate, which is more reasonable to assume? 17 and a half hours. 17 and a half fucking hours for one single gun. And people have the gall to complain about playing 15 matches doing something stupid like getting two headshots per game. Sure, it's not fun, but neither is this. It's actually much worse. And that's not even all. When you go through all this trouble, all this hogwash, playing and grinding, so happy you finally finish it, then you don't even get a weapon you want. You get a weapon you do not even give a shit about. The RSA interdiction, I don't want that piece of junk and neither does anyone else because it's a terrible weapon. I would rather grind out a battle pass and know what I'm getting rather than getting some random weapon I don't care about. The earlier iterations of these challenges in Black Ops 3 had melee weapons and ranged weapons mixed into one drop so you could spend all that time playing and get a melee weapon that again you don't even give a shit about and will never use. 
Of course, later on, we got a new challenge called the Grand Slam Bundle that came with 10 rare supply drops, one guaranteed ranged weapon, and one guaranteed melee weapon. Some versions gave different unique camos, but the ranged weapon was the standard with them. The one I remember seeing during my play was getting 125 wins. Again, with the amount of time it takes to do, it makes me sick to do that for one single weapon. Most people don't care about anything else, let's be real. Like, the camo's cool, but who actually cares? And same with the melee weapon. Nobody really cares, aside from the people that use the melee weapons. And then you get 10 rare supply drops, which you have under a 1% chance to even get anything good out of it. Thankfully, the ranged and melee weapons were separated, which there are 31 of, by the way, to the launch's 30 weapons. So there are actually more supply drop weapons than there are launch weapons that most people couldn't even experience because of how fucked up this system is. And if you want to call melee weapons supply drop weapons, that increases the total to 50 weapons. But after all of this, it's not even the most messed up part and just keeps getting worse like an ongoing train wreck. The absolute worst part of this entire system, this anal grease system, is the fact you can get a weapon out of a supply drop and it can still be a duplicate and all you get is crypto keys. Why? How about a reroll for a new weapon since you have a better chance of winning the lottery than getting all of the guns in this game? How about a ton of crypto keys since the chance of getting a weapon is under 1%? How about anything that is not 10 crypto keys in a shit line from Blackjack? It just became worse and worse over time since those guaranteed weapon bundles were only sometimes available. You needed to either buy supply drops or get crypto keys a lot of the time, making it nearly impossible to experience the new content the game added and it genuinely impacted the player. More and more items, stupid emotes, shirts, pants, and hats, so much else was added to the game, adding more fluff and making it harder and decreasing the chances of getting something you actually want. If I were to take a guess, getting a weapon is probably in the 0.01% chance range in modern times, making it nearly impossible for most people to get anything. They're just going to get blasted by invisible assholes with marshals and Olympias camping in corners. Sure, you have guns that can kill enemies like that are pretty decent, the Man of War, VMP, and Friends are good weapons, but the fact you can load into a game where you have other players using objectively better weapons than you because they got lucky is horrible. I would never recommend anyone playing this game now. You have a better chance of boxing a panther and actually winning than having fun, unless you're going to play zombies, which of course needed to be monetized as well. Not being as egregious as multiplayer, Zombies has its own system called Liquid Divinum, allowing players to get what are essentially cheats in the form of gobble gum. Giving you all the perks in the map, making everything free, Power Vacuum is the most broken gobble gum known to mankind. It is harmless, but still, people seem to get discredited from high rounds to some people if they use gobble gums. Being someone who's gotten around 100 multiple times on different maps in this game, it's just something that cuts down on time since it's mind-numbingly boring to go for. Is it cheating? Yes. Is it ruining the experience of other players? Kind of. In public matches, it sucks when people spawn in a bunch of things, but it doesn't make your experience worsen. It's just irritating. It depends on who you are. This game is monetized to all hell and made $3.4 billion off of the first year of Black Ops 3 just from post-launch sales alone. That is how successful this system was. Adding gambling to games seem to have paid off, preying on people that have a severe addiction or stupid kids to meet their bottom line. Now we are in a world with $20 to $30 skins and $10 battle passes. We know what we're getting. It allows us to understand if it's worth our time to unlock the said items. And I'm well aware of the other issues this modern system has on gaming. Believe me, I know. I just wanted to highlight how awful previous systems could be and how disgusting loot boxes were, how it was unfair to the players, ruining their experiences. And sure, some games like Overwatch did have excellent loot box systems where everything was easily acquirable. Then you have a game like this where you can't even experience all of the content without spending thousands upon thousands of dollars, literally. Even if you did spend that much, you probably still wouldn't have everything in this game. The way I got footage of these weapons is because of a mod that allows you to test them all out with no issues. There is no way in hell I would ever buy any supply drops. Sure, I know spending 20 to $30 on a skin is crazy. I do agree with that 100%, especially in a game like COD where you're playing as a personality-less character that is essentially Plank from Ed, Ed and Eddie. It is a complete waste of money in most cases, but at least you actually know what you're going to be purchasing. Some would say these systems aren't working because everyone clearly hates them, but this system would not be in every single modern game if they did not make money. People live in their Twitter bubble and think because they saw 1,000 other people saying it sucks, that means everyone in the world feels that way, which is clearly not the case. If you hate this system and hope it goes away, that is very doubtful to happen since loot boxes were bad enough to the point they were illegal in some countries now. This modern system is not illegal in any way since it's technically consumer friendly because the person knows what they are buying, it is just overpriced. 
Black Ops 3 truly shows how bad monetization can be, and I said earlier, every single weapon is nearly impossible to get. As bad as the overpriced skins are, as distasteful as battle passes are to some people, looking back at this should make people rethink their comments on modern stores. It seriously could be much worse than it is right now.